you know, recently we had Remembrance Day and, uh, you know, people were wearing the poppies in and around Britain and so on. And I was looking through the history books and seeing players who, who were in the army as well. Mm. And uh, one just leapt out at me. And, ladies and gentlemen, I bring to the table Walter Tull. Now, you might not have heard of this man, but he was the first black officer in the British Army, but the second black player ever to play in the top division of the, uh, the Football League. Brilliant. In this country. So quite a, a magnificent man already. Mm. Pioneer. He liked shooting. He did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good. I see what you've done there, Pete. So here we Walter Tull, uh, born in Folkestone in Kent, uh, on the 28th of April, 1888. Uh, <sighs> 79 years before the Summer of Love. My giddy That would also make him the first um, black man to join the British Army, play in the top division in uh, English football and win the sperm race. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely unbelievable stuff. Well, he, he wasn't the first one to play in the top division of the football league. He was the second one. Well, he did it. bloody well, Mark. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll thank you not to take <laughs> that away from him. But, he, but he's a gold medalist in my eyes. <laughs> so, yeah, he was he was born in, uh, in, in Folkestone, as we say, and his, um, his father was the son of a slave and, and had arri arrived from Barbados in 1876. But he'd married a, a girl from Kent. He had, a, he had a tough upbringing. His parents died when he was young, and he moved when uh, he was very young to Bethnal Green in East London, of course. Um, but after, after finishing school, he played a lot of football, and he had a trial at Clapton, who were an East London amateur club. And by the beginning of, of the 1908-1909 season, he was playing for their first team. And he was a, a talented inside forward. And Clapton uh, had a very successful season. They won the Amateur Cup, the London Senior Cup, the London County Amateur Cup. And uh, the, the, local, uh, the local paper, the Football Star, said uh, they praised Tull's clever footwork and described him as being the catch of the season. And because of this, Tottenham Hotspur came knocking and uh, he decided um, that he wanted to join them. So, so Tull was signed by Tottenham Hotspur. And as we said, he was the, only the second uh, black man to play professional football in Britain. The first was uh, Arthur Warden, of course. And I think Andrew Watson was the first ever uh, black man to play football, but he was not professional. He was semi-pro. In May uh, 1909, Walter Tull and Tottenham Hotspur went on a tour of South America. It's crazy to think that back then... Yeah, yeah. It must have taken them ages to get there. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but they did, and they, they played games in Argentina and Uruguay. So he was the first black player ever to play football in South America. Oh, that, that's mental. That's amazing. Yeah. As, as far back so as they that. didn't even have leagues. In 1909. Oh, well, no, no, I, I, Brazil didn't have a proper um, professional top division until like 1970s, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mental. no. They, they had won two World Cups, Brazil, or three, I think, before they got a proper organised nationwide league. That's, that's a fact. Incredible. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, it's quite, in, in a letter he wrote to, the, uh, to a friend of his when he was out there, he said that he was suffering from a sunstroke. <laughs> And he complained that none of the waiters spoke English. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, without a well, absolutely without a, without a doubt, this man's British credentials uh, yeah, yeah. cannot be uh, yeah. questioned. Um, but he was he was given considerable play, uh, praise for his early performances. Uh, the, uh, playing for Tottenham, the Daily Chronicle said that Tull's display uh, against Manchester United must have astounded everyone who saw it. Uh, such perfect coolness and uh, such clinical waiting for a fraction of a second in order to get a pass in before the defender has worked to a forced position and such accuracy in the strength of passing and during the first half Tull uh, I love how the, the, the journalist puts this he said during the first half Tull just compelled Curtis who was one of his teammates to play a good game for Curtis who was the outside right was plied with such a series of passes that it made it almost impossible for him to do anything other than well <laughs> <laughs> that's class so, I mean, he's getting these kind of write-ups back yeah, in the day. Yeah, you know, yeah. he seemed to, he was much more ahead of his time, yeah. uh, Walter Tell. And, and against a, a game at Bradford City on, on October the 4th, 1909. I mean, 1909. Yeah. You know, the Daily Chronicle uh, wrote that he was a class superior to that shown by uh, the rest of his colleagues. Unfortunately, against there was, a, there was an infamous match that, that, that Tottenham had against Bristol City in October uh, 1909, and he was the target of, of racial abuse from the home supporters. Now, of course, back in those days, when mm. we're talking serious, mm. you know, the, the racism was, was unfortunately... Mm. Uh, widespread, I suppose. Uh, yeah. A norm, yeah, really. Yeah. I mean, we're not even talking 50s here. We're talking no. 1909, yeah, for yeah. crying out loud. 
One uh, of the journalists from the, the Football Star wrote quite angry, let me tell those Bristol hooligans that Tull is so clean in mind and method as to be a model for all white men who play football, the best forward on the field. Mm. However, this incident at Bristol embarrassed some of the Spurs officials. So what did they do? Well, in their impudent wisdom, mm. um, they dropped Walter Tull to the reserves. Oh. Um, Cutting well, off the problem at the start. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Idiots. Yeah. Exactly. So we um, head into the grave. So they blame the hearse. <laughs> <laughs> well, he made only uh, three more appearances for the first team, which was which was a crying shame. He scored ten goals in, in twenty seven league games with the reserves. But he, of course, he got a bit fed up of his lack of first team appearances. And in February nineteen eleven, he came to uh, the attention of Northampton Town Football Club when Northampton were beaten seven one by Spurs in the reserve team fixture and Tull scored a hat-trick um, and he was later transferred uh, for quite which was described as a heavy transfer fee to Northampton Town in, in the Southern League and he was signed by Herbert Chapman oh, oh he's in the Dean Windows all the time there you are you see they all know each other in yeah yeah, yeah yeah you know they, 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 like an old boys club well exactly <laughs> <laughs> they're getting a bit too big for their boots actually I must say <laughs> <laughs> well, well Dean Windows is here to yeah, exactly. yeah. Yeah. and of course we know Chapman went on to manage Huddersfield and Arsenal and so on and so forth Tull scored four goals in one match once playing inside forward for, for Northampton Town and he played over a hundred games uh, for Northampton as a wing half I'm sure we can all relate to that position. <laughs> yeah. other clubs wanted to sign Walter Tull in 1914 Glasgow Rangers started negotiations with Northampton Town however before he could play for them First World War was declared and Tull, being the, the magnificent man he was, immediately abandoned his career and offered his services to join the British Army. Now, military rules had initially prevented black people joining white regiments. Um, but Tull, um, like a lot of other professional football players, he joined the football battalion. Yeah, famous. Absolutely. Mm. The army soon recognised Tull's leadership qualities and he was quickly promoted to rank of sergeant. Mm. So not only has he smashed down the rules of you know, um, black men joining uh, white regiments, they, they put him to sergeant, yeah, as was yeah. his qualities. You yeah. know. That wasn't allowed back then, was it? You weren't allowed to hold a, a certain station in the, in the British Army if you were a black guy. Well, that's right. Well, th well he, he, he did so well in battle that, uh, that senior officers recommend that he should be given further promotion so um, he was had officer training he became an officer in the army which went completely in the face of the military regulations which forbidden any person of, of as it states here any person of color to become an officer so he became the first black uh, combat officer in the British Army, which is absolutely incredible. And, and, and as Phil Vasili um, has pointed out, and he wrote the book Colouring Over the White Line, which is all about the history of um, black footballers in Britain, um, he said, according to the manual of, of military law, black soldiers of any rank were not desirable. During the First World War, military chiefs of staff, with government approval, argued that white soldiers would not accept orders by men of colour and on a, no account should black soldiers serve on the front line. Different Wal Walter Tull, he just, boom, yeah. Just smashed, he kicked the door down. Yeah, yeah. You know, in fact, he was massively endorsed by all the other sergeants yeah. and, and, and all the other higher-ranking officers. They yeah. wanted him in because they recognised his, his quality. Unfortunately, on, on March the, the 25th, 1918, uh, Walter Tull was ordered to lead his men uh, on an attack on the German trenches, and he died um, at the age of just 29, which was, which was absolutely uh, you know, a real big shame. And, and a lot of his men actually made valiant efforts under heavy fire from German machine guns to, to try and save him, you mm. know, because they loved him, mm. absolutely loved him. The man was you know, held in such high esteem. And so, you know, at the age of 29, he, he died. In, but what an amazing story of, uh, you know, here was this orphaned um, black guy from, from East London who, who was a top amateur footballer, then a, a top professional footballer, and then a, a top officer in the army. I mean, mm -hmm. absolutely incredible story. And uh, the road which runs behind the North Stand at Sixfield Stadium, where Northampton Town play, is named Water Tull Way. And in 2004, Tottenham Hotspur and Rangers contested the Water Tull Memorial Cup. Brilliant. And uh, Rangers won 2-0. Uh, uh, plans are underway to make a film about his life, and two films have been made for Teachers TV, which is focusing on the teaching about Walter Tull, and that was launched in May 2008. And on Sunday, the 11th of July, 1999, Northampton Town unveiled a memorial to uh, Walter Tull in a, in a dedicated garden of remembrance at Sixfield Stadium. The epitaph uh, was written by Phil um, Vasili, who, uh, as I said, was the author uh, of Colouring Over the White Line, History of Black Footballers in Britain, which is my book of the way. Yeah. <laughs> the inscription reads, uh, Through his actions, Tull ridiculed 
ridiculed the barriers of ignorance that tried to deny black people equality with their contemporaries. His life stands testament to a determination to confront those people and those obstacles that sought to diminish him and the world in which he lives. It reveals a man, though rendered breathless in his prime, whose strong heart still beats loudly today. Welcome to Tower. What a worthy entrance. Absolutely. Excellent stuff. I'm sure Dean would